Hey guys, welcome to this Excelization. This is Nestor Adrian Sen, and today we're gonna learn 10 quick and very useful tips in Excel 2016. So if you want to be more productive at work, this tutorial is definitely for you. But before we get started, if you're new to this channel, please let's make sure that you hit the subscribe button so you won't miss anything. All right, guys, let's get started. Today, we're going to learn 10 very useful Excel tips, and we're going to go from format multiple sheets at the same time to create and manage drop down lists in Excel 2016. So let's do it. So how to format multiple sheets at the same time? So we're going to use this shortcut, control, and then click to select multiple sheets at the same time. And then we can enter data in just one sheet. And this step replicates to the other sheets as well. So let's create three new sheets right here. OK, so just for the example. All right. So we have three new sheets right here. So the main goal here is to add the same information among these three sheets. So this is how it works. So we need to select the three sheets and we're going to use control and then click to select these three sheets right here. OK, let's do it. Control, control, click. There you have it. So we have selected these three sheets and now it's time to enter the information that we want to have. So let's say that we want to add right here customer and then right here shipping company. OK, and then FedEx right here. USPS, UPS, DHL. So now for customer one, customer two, and then let's have 10 customers here just for the example. Let's adjust this column right here, double click. And right here, we can combine this right here. And then let's combine these two cells as well. And now let's give this a different format. And let's say that we're going to create right here a table format. It's right there. And now let's say that we want to highlight these cells. Let's do that as well. And then right here, white, just for the example. OK, and let's see if it's working for the other sheets as well. If we want to stop making changes, so basically click on a different tab like that. There it is. So let's go back and double check if everything is among these three new sheets. So for sheet one, perfect, works fine. For sheet two, perfect, it's right there. For sheet three, perfect, it's right there. We have saved a lot of time by using this shortcut. So that's how it works, guys. Let's go to the next tip. How to use a table to enter formulas automatically. So you guys might be familiar with this shortcut, Control plus T. So let's go to this data to create an example, OK? Let's go to claims. And right here, the first thing that we want to do is to create this data in a table format. So let's do it. We can select any cell within this data, and then we hit Control T. So this is the new window that appears. And then right here, we hit OK. So let's make sure that my table has headers is selected, because it has headers, right? And then we hit OK. Boom. So now let's create a new column. So let's call this shipping cost percentage. Now let's insert a formula right here, equal, and then right here, shipping cost divided by total cost. And then we hit enter, boom. So what's happening here is that when we have this data in a table format, so every time that we create a new formula, so it automatically replicates for every single column or well, it saves us a lot of time. That's how it works. Now, if you want to keep editing this part right here, you can select Control Shift down arrow. So let's select right here percentage, a couple of decimals right there. Boom. So now let's go to the next tip. Display all formulas at once. So this is very useful. So And we're going to use Control plus this symbol right there. Let's go back to claims real quick. So as you guys can see right here, we can see text, we can see dates, we can see numbers, but we don't know where we have formulas, right? Let's say that we want to make changes and we want to know where those formulas are. 
So this shortcut is very useful to identify these formulas. So this is how it works. So let's hold down control and press the symbol that we just saw. Control and then the symbol, boom. So this is what's happening. Let's see. See right there? So we have formulas for total cost. They are right there. And then we also have formulas for shipping cost percentage. So the formula that we just created a few seconds ago. So now you can make decisions, right? Let's say that you want to change the formula. So you go to that cell and then make the changes. Very, very useful shortcut. So let's go back to the next tip. But of course, if you're going to go back to the previous format, you basically use the same shortcut, control plus the symbol that we just saw. So now let's go back to the next tip. So how to select all formulas in a worksheet at once. So we want to use this shortcut, control plus G, and this is how it works. Let's go back to the claims. So now let's say that we want to select the formulas. We don't want to see the formulas, but we want to select the cells that have formulas, right? And we're going to use that shortcut. So let's hold down control and then press the letter G. And right here, the go to window appears. And now let's go to special. And now let's select just formulas, OK? And then we hit OK. And let's see what happens. Boom. So as we saw before, we know that total cost and shipping cost percentage, those two columns have formulas, right? And now these formulas have been highlighted. So now we know for sure that these cells have formulas, right? Very, very useful tool as well. Let's go back to the next tip. So now we're going to learn how to use the paste special feature. And we're going to use this shortcut, Control, Alt, and V at the same time. Let's go back to the claims data right here. So now let's say that we want to copy the first 10 cells for total cost. Let's do that. Control C. You guys are familiar with that shortcut. Control C to copy information. And now let's say that we want to paste that information right here. This is just for the example. Okay. And now Control V. Let's see what happens. Because we have a formula, we can see the results right there. We are just seeing zero. This is not the right outcome, right? So that's why we have to use this shortcut, paste special. Let's do it. Control Z, because we don't want to see those changes, right? And now let's go back to claims again. Control C again. And then let's paste right here the information. And now let's use this shortcut, Control Alt V. And now we have this window right here. And now we can select just values. Hit OK. And let's see what happens. Boom. So now we can see those values. Of course, these are not formulas anymore. They are just values. So now let's go to the next tip. How to select an entire row or column. Let's go back to the claims tab real quick. Let's say that we want to copy row 10. Row 10, let's select any cell that's part of this row. Let's say this one right here. And now let's hold down Shift and then space bar. Let's do it. Boom. So row 10 has been selected right away. And let's say that we want to copy. We can copy this row to a different sheet or different table, whatever we want to do. Now let's say that we want to copy this information right here, column G. The same thing right here. We select any cell within this column. And now let's use the shortcut, Control and space bar. Boom. That's how it works. And then you can select, you can highlight, you can do whatever you want. Very, very useful shortcuts. Let's go back to the next tip. How to move or copy data between existing rows or columns. I've been using this shortcut a lot at work, to be honest with you guys. And this is very, very useful and you can save a lot of time. So let's do it. Let's go back to the claim stuff again. So let's say that we want to move shipping cost percentage between total cost and city. So before we do that, 
let's make sure that this data is not in a table format. Okay, so let's go to design real quick. And right here, let's select this option right here, convert to range. Because if we don't do that, it wouldn't work. Okay, now let's do it without using the shortcut yet. So let's select. So we have selected this information and let's drag into column K and let's see what happens. Let's hit OK. So you may say, hey, shipping cost is right there now, but we have lost city, right? So that's why we have to use this shortcut. Control Z again, and then let's use the shortcut. Hold down Shift and then right here, drag. We want to place this column between total cost and CD. As you guys can see right there, that vertical line, that means that this new column is ready to be placed between these two columns. So let's release right there and let's see what happens. Boom. That's how it works, guys. And you can even adjust this column right there. Double click right there. As you guys can see, this shortcut is very useful and you can move rows or columns in different directions, right? Among this data. Now let's go back to the next tip. So now let's learn how to freeze and lock panel options. So this is how it works. We go to view and then we go to the option freeze panes. So let's go back to the claims data and let's see how it works. So here we are. And let's say that we want to freeze column B and then row four. So in order to do that, we have to be in this cell right there. We have to select that cell. And then let's go to view. And right here, we want to select freeze panes right there. And let's see what happens. So what are the changes? And let's see. So let's say that we want to move in a vertical way. This is very useful if we have large amounts of data, okay? Thousands of thousands of rows, for example, and you want to see what's happening, right? And then if you want to go to the right or left, we can do the same as well. And then column B is frozen, right? Very, very useful tool. And it's highly recommended if we have large amounts of data, as I just mentioned. All right, guys, let's go back to the next tip. So now let's learn how to set document recovery options. So this is why this tip is very useful. If your computer crashes and you haven't saved your file, in this case, your Excel file, you might lose your information, right? You have been working so hard in a project and then suddenly, boom, your computer crashed. So how do you recover that information? So we have an option here. So the good news here is that we can set up this option here in Excel and we can say, hey, I want to auto recover this information every two minutes, every five minutes, every 10 minutes. So it depends on you. OK, so this is how it works. Let's go to file. So right here, let's hit options and then let's hit save. If you guys can see right here. This is the option. This should be selected. Save auto recover information every, and then you can select the time that you want to have. So in my case, I said every 10 minutes, but I can change it, right? I can say every five minutes. It depends on how much work are you putting on your projects. It can be five minutes, it can be two minutes, it can be one minute. So we can use this option to auto recover information and then we hit okay and there you have it so let's say that something bad happens every five minutes will be our recovering the information if you haven't set up this feature please this is highly recommended maybe the option hasn't been selected or maybe the auto recover is selected every hour and you don't want to have that right you can change it to five minutes or ten minutes now let's go to the next tip how to create and manage drop down lists 
in Excel. So how to create and manage drop down lists in Excel. This is a very, very useful tip as well. So this is how it works. So let's create a new sheet real quick. So here are the steps, create a list in a different sheet. So we are going to create right here a new list and then select all items, right click and then define name. And then let's go to data, data validation, allow and then list. And then for source, select list name. OK, so let's do it. Don't get overwhelmed, please. It's quite straightforward. So let's go to this new sheet right here and let's create a country group right here. Let's say Peru. And now let's select these countries, right click, define name, and let's call this group countries, okay? And then we hit okay. Boom. Let's go back to the tips tab again. And right here, we have already completed the two first steps, right? And now let's go to data, data validation, allow list. All right, let's do that. So let's say that we want to place the drop down list right here. Let's select this cell first. And now let's go to data. And right here, let's select data validation. And now, right here, we need to select list, right? And then for source, equal. Do you guys remember the source? Yes, it's countries, right? Countries we just created. Okay, and then we hit OK. And let's see what happens. Also, remember that we have to select ignore blank and then also in cell drop down. And then we hit OK. Boom. So automatically, you guys can see right here this option. Let's go right here. There you guys have it. We have the countries that we just created. Another option right here is that you can copy this cell and this format to a different cell as well. Control D. It's right there. See? That's how it works. That's all I have for today. I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. If so, please give me a thumbs up, share with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe as well because you don't want to miss anything. Thank you very much for your time. Again, this is Nestor Adrian from Visualization. And see you guys in my next tutorial.